Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, like the description said, we got we got two different engines. Yes, on the left side of your screen over here, we have a Peterbilt 389 flat top powered by an MX-13 Packard engine. On the right side of your screen, we also have a 389 Peterbilt flat top powered by a Cummins X-15. And you know what they both have, Tommy? Monster stacks. 18 speeds. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I don't know where you're going. <laughs> they all have 18 speeds. It was a shot in the dark, but I mean, they both have monster stacks. They both have monster stacks too. They yeah. both have Dynaflex stacks on them. Exactly. So, but uh, yeah, we're going to flip the camera around. Tommy's going to go over the whole MX deal. I'm going to go over the Cummins a little bit there and uh, just kind of, you know, give you guys a little better take on the two engines. They're both really good engines, different applications, kind of like work better for other ones and... Um, just, you know, if you didn't know, maybe we'll give you a little more insight. Yeah, so I, like Brian said, the whole point of this video is to tell you why it is somebody would choose an MX and why it is that somebody would choose a Cummins. They are very different as far as their benefits go. So let's, uh, instead of giving anything away, let's just dive into it. All right, let's go. Let's go. So the first thing to bring up right out of the gate, whenever you're specking a truck from the factory, when you spec it with an MX engine, you're going to save north of $4,500. While the MX is cheaper than our Cummins engine here, there is a big difference in between the two. Uh, comparable horsepower, everything else, you're still on the Cummins, you're getting a, a larger engine, it's a 15 liter versus the MX, which is a 13 liter. One of the bigger differences in between the MX and the Cummins is a Cummins is a steel block engine, whereas the MX is a compressed graphite engine. Now the compressed graphite is actually known to be a little bit stronger, but the biggest benefit with compressed gra graphite is that it is lighter. So this engine altogether, spec for spec, is about 410 pounds lighter. Fine, I get it. The MX is lighter, but again, we're 15 liters, we're a steel block. One of the benefits to having this setup is I have more horsepower and torque options than the MX does. I can go all the way up to 605 horsepower and 2050 torque. Whereas the MX is a little bit lower, you're at 510 and 1850. But with all that weight and everything inside the Cummins, the extra rotating mast is going to cost you. The, the, the higher output, the, the larger liter engine versus the MX-13, the MX-13 has been shown to get anywhere from three quarters to one whole mile to the gallon better on diesel fuel mileage right now. And I don't think that can be ignored with today's current diesel prices. While the MX probably does get better fuel mileage, we'll not argue that. Again, I've got more displacement, I've got more horsepower, and I've got more torque. That takes fuel. But another upside on the Cummins, in my opinion, towards the MX, is service points. So I can take this truck to more places to have warranty work done in the U.S. than you can on an MX. You're going to need all those extra service points because... The oil changes on this one are only 75,000 miles, whereas on the Cummins, you have to change the oil every 60,000 miles. On the fuel filter, you only change it 75,000 miles over here. The Cummins, again, 60,000 miles. As far as overall maintenance costs, the Cummins is going to have a higher maintenance cost, so you're going to need all those extra service points out there. Maybe our service intervals are a little bit longer. We got 15,000 miles. If you're working all the time, I mean, it's 15,000 miles really that much. Again, got displacement and I've got the horsepowers. Um, aside from that, the X-15 engine has been around uh, a longer time than the MX, meaning if you've got an engine, it's out of warranty, whatever, you can find used parts more readily available around the United States than you can on an MX. Okay, guys, really in all seriousness, we had a really fun back and forth there, but <laughs> we're going to talk to you about the benefits of both engines and why you should you know, have a deeper consideration before you just say, I'm taking one over the other. Yeah, I mean, you had some decent talking points, but again, the motor's bigger. I like big motors. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we should do next? What's that? We should drive them. I love driving them. And honestly, it's this. I think this is the first video where we drove two trucks back to back. So that's that makes it a little it, bit special. And it'll be a good, it'll be, so we're going to take them down the road. We're going to say nothing. You're just going to hear it. We're just going to listen to it for a little bit. Then we're going to talk about uh, our take going down the road, driving them, how they feel, all that fun stuff. Um, one thing I will say about these, and as you saw in the beginning of the video, they do have a distinctive sound difference. Mm -hmm. um, and going down the road, it's uh, it's a little bit, but it's uh, you, you can you can feel it in the truck. I mean, every every single engine you know creates its its own set of vibrations, and so whenever 
you know, whenever there's a there's a truck or whenever there's an engine vibrating a little more or a little less, it, it translates into driver comfort inside the cab. Yep, and the engine RPM ranges are all different with these things. They're, they're two different animals. I've driven both of them already, and uh, they're, they're, they're almost night and day, but they're not, I guess is the best way to put it. That's Tom Brian. I'm really excited because this will actually be, he's already drove both of them. They're 18 speeds. I have yet to drive a manual Packard engine, so I'm excited to see what the difference is he says he says it's a little bit different getting used to the rpm ranges and what the actual engine's like which is very true every single engine is different and so i'm excited to see what that difference is yeah well i guess we'll just uh which one you'll take first um let's start with the best one let's go with the pack one. <laughs> whatever <laughs> all right we're gonna jump with the pack car and take this thing down the road all right so i'm sitting in the pack car truck as brian's like driving the uh the red truck or the red and white one over there out of the way i just kind of wanted to level with you guys real quick I'm not specifically one engine over the other as far as which ones I like the most. I just love a little competition with Brian every now and then, you know? All right, about to jump in the pack car. MX-13, 18-speed in a 389. What's up, Tommy? I'm getting ready to drive a truck with uh, some safety first, though. Before I move anything with you know commercial equipment, I always put my super safety seatbelt on. There you go. It's good things to have. I mean, so going down the road, the truck's pretty quiet. Yeah, the back car definitely has the advantage as far as being quiet. Now, the traditionalists are not going to like that. The traditionalists are going to want to be able to hear some sound coming out of the exhaust. Uh, but, you know, a lot of your new age drivers, a lot of the guys who are just, you know, coming fresh out of uh, driving school, they like a little bit more quiet. They like a little bit more comfort. So, you know, it's like it's, it's going back to the, the automatic transmission argument that's going on right now. I wouldn't say argument, the debate. The automatic transmissions are selling at a higher rate than manuals at the current moment, whereas three years ago, you wouldn't have wanted a automatic transmission just because manual helped you so much on the resale value. Well, now automatics are becoming so much more popular. So I think the same argument applies as far as having a little bit of sound in the cab, not having a little bit of sound in the cab. I think several years ago, there was way more traditionalists in this industry, but now it's getting to where there are a lot more, you know, new age drivers that they want the, the quiet comfort inside the cab. I totally agree with you. There, there is a, you know, years back, you couldn't give me something quiet. I mean, everything I drove, I wanted it loud. And I think when you get a little bit older too, you start to kind of like a little bit of a quieter truck. Yeah. It's uh, less fatiguing and stuff, but uh, it's something to get used to having a quiet vehicle. I knew your age was going to come out eventually. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, the the engine is a, it's a smooth engine. I mean, sitting in here riding in this, uh, the, the, engine, the engine feels really smooth. When I drove it, I noticed it kind of like the R, it liked the RPMs a little bit more between shifts. Yep. Um, but it was a, it was a very smooth engine. Uh, right. You're definitely not wrong on that. I tried driving it like a Cummins when I first got into it. I tried you know shifting in lower RPMs a little bit. Yeah. And it definitely likes the higher RPM band before you before you do a shift. Yep. But definitely a lot smoother. There is you know driving this versus the uh, the Cummins again, it's not exactly. Uh, apples to apples there because the Cummins we're going to jump in next is a 605 2050 torque. Um, you can definitely tell when driving this one it is not a 605 2050 torque motor. Yeah, that's there's there is a big difference, but 
you know, again, the advantage, uh, the quiet, the comfort, the weight, and fuel mileage. Fuel mileage. Fuel mileage is huge, especially right now with the cost. Cost of diesels, or cost of diesel is getting out of control. The diesels, and uh, you know, that's that's something to consider when purchasing your next truck. Yep. I mean, that's a lot of money in your pocket. Have you got you got an initial savings on the on the, the purchase of the truck, yep. and then you're saving every mile you're driving. One tenth of a mile to the gallon for a fleet, they consider it to be a two thousand dollar per year savings. So if you can get per that, truck, yeah, that's per truck. And so whatever whatever you can get that, you know, if you've got a five truck fleet and you're saving half a mile to the gallon, imagine that's that's you know, big. That's a hundred thousand dollars a year or something, you know, mm-hmm. something to that effect. No, it's, what is that? Fifty thousand dollars a year. That's you know going to direct. That's direct bottom line net profit back in the business. Yep. And you're going to save a little bit of money on uh, the maintenance. Uh, I'll give it. I'll give it that. Yeah. Well, and then upfront cost. Yep. You know, so if you go buy five trucks, saving you know four thousand dollars a truck, that's that's an additional twenty grand. So you look at a year one savings uh, with maintenance ends probably around seventy one thousand dollars. Then it's going to be fifty thousand dollars a year running a five truck fleet, Packard versus Cummins. Mm-hmm. But if you have an application where you're constantly hauling heavy heavy loads, you know, I've got friends who haul military tanks, you know, a 200,000 pound tank, there's no way this engine would, you know. It's not the right, it's not the right motor. This this is a very, uh, there's applications where this engine works extremely well. Yeah. OTR application, running standard weights, absolutely, you definitely want to drop it back hard. Yep. So it's getting a little darker outside. We got the benefit of turning on some old clearance lights up there. But tell me about the Cummins versus the MX, Brian. What's your thoughts here? Driving well, driving one versus the other. One versus the other. So there's a there's a very, very distinct difference in the power in this truck versus the MX. It's like I earlier, I said it's a little unfair. It's a 605 2050 torque. Um, you can definitely tell the difference in it. Um, I like horsepower stuff, so I, I prefer this. But um, you know, some things that are a little bit notable difference: the audible sound of the engine. Uh, this one's a little, little meatier. Um, you can feel the engine a little bit more. I'm gonna say that you can feel the vibration of the engine more. Not that it's a bad vibration. You can just, you can tell it's a different engine. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that, that that goes back to the displacement differences that we've talked about. Yep. Yeah, I mean, when you go from a 13 liter to a 15 liter, like harmonics play a major difference in things. I mean, there's there's just a lot. But um, yeah, not not to mention the MX. They they recently went to a smaller turbo specifically to cut out a little bit more of the vibration and sound. Yeah, I will say though, I mean, if I'm running a fleet of trucks and I'm real worried about uh, fuel mileage and things like that, the the MX is a very tempting motor. I'd want to try one. Yeah. Um, Which well, I, I like. I just I like the Cummins. I like. I know Cummins. My pickup truck's got a Cummins in it. I just I like Cummins. Um, and it'd be you know on the traditionalist side of things and all that. It's kind of one of Cummins. Um, and it's like with any new engine in the world, you know, it's uh, it, it takes time. People, some people have got to be the. They got to try it out. They got to run it. And uh, and it, 
find out for themselves. I know they're real big with fleets. Yeah, so as far as uh, the MX take rate over at Peterbilt, I, I know um, last year it was really close to 50-50, so that means the MX, as far as sales go, uh, it's definitely catching on. And, you know, the you know, I, I, it definitely wasn't the same ratio in 389s. Owner-operators are not taking back our MX at the same rate as they're taking a Cummins. But anybody who's watching their bottom dollar or any of their, their service and maintenance accounts, they definitely should be looking at the MX as a viable option. Yeah, and on the 579s and stuff in that, in, that, in that truck, I mean, I get it. Yeah. It does make a distinct noise, doesn't it? Yeah. Still not as loud as the older style 389s, the uh, the pre-emissions 379s. Definitely a lot more noise back in the day. But if you're talking about having a little bit of cab noise, liking a little bit of cab noise, that uh, this that, one has it. that that Cummins is the the engine of choice for the between the two. And you know what? Another side of it too, like with what we do on building custom trucks, um, I like the the cleanliness under the hood of the Cummins engine, yep. and it allows you to do a lot of stuff to it. Um, not to say that I wouldn't take a challenge if somebody wanted us to make like a custom in that. That would be a pretty neat challenge. It would um, be difficult. I mean, you'd have to really look at some things and figure some stuff out. But but while you can we're make it look better. while we're talking about under the hood of the MX truck. Uh, Peterbilt has been investing a lot of cash into this AR technology that they're working on, this augmented reality. Tell where, me about that. yeah, they they basically have like this iPad, and you know, once you pull up a service code and it says, "Hey, it's this part," the iPad will basically lead you to the part. You can you can just hold it up to the engine, and literally, it's going to be like, "Yeah, your part is this direction," and it, it's making it a lot more simple and easily serviced for newer technicians because one of the biggest you know issues that the industry is facing right now is is a technician shortage mm -hmm. so the easier and more you know capable you can make it for a, you know a newer younger earlier technician to work on you know the we're like in the video game uh, uh era so yeah the, the guys coming up working on stuff are way more used to to those uh to that style of technology yeah uh more so than like myself but uh, I think the allure of it would help, I guess, drive some, some more techs into the industry. Yeah. Yeah, which I think is a pretty cool technology. It's like I said, Packard's invested a ton into it. And if, if anybody has not seen the new MX factory, I call it new, it was built like 2010, but it's relatively new in consideration of factories. Yeah. This, it's, this, it's a huge factory. It's in Columbus, Mississippi, and it's the MX factory. It is awesome really really cool to go look at i'm still gonna tell you though i'm a Cummins guy <laughs> <laughs> you have tons of good points on the mx i'm not even gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna argue that i'm still a Cummins guy um i don't know i like driving this this thing i just like it because i like the big horsepower the big torque they're just more fun to drive oh yeah the pack car is better <laughs> You just keep trying to rally me up over here. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll stop this truck. You can get out and walk home. How about that? <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, it, it uh, again, both engines have their sales points. Uh, it's, I think it's a different buyer. I think we'll agree that the, the MX and the Cummins is a different buyer. Um, well, they always say there's a butt for every seat. Uh, but there's a button for that seat. It works with certain applications extremely well. Extremely uh, well. Better than what the Cummins will, will do. I'll, yeah. I'll give it that. I yeah. guess just all the people, all my friends, everybody I hang out with and where I'm around um, are all, you know, big engine guys. But there's, there's plenty engine, of people that don't need it. They're engine guys, but at the end of the day, they're also business guys. And yeah. they got to be looking at their bottom line. And so... You know, we won't we won't say who the MX truck that we have right now is for, but it's that's that's a Cummins fleet, yeah, and the guy is. is trying an MX because to see how of fuel mileage and how old thing will run out. Right, because he hauls bulk, 
And so if you're hauling bulk, that extra 450 pounds difference in the engine, that's 450 pounds that you get to put in the trailer. So, I mean, it makes, it makes a big enough difference to him on bulk and fuel mileage where he, you know, I, he wanted to take a second look at it. So he's gonna try one out. And, and then, uh, you know the cool thing is, we'll be able to, in like six months from now, like recap on that truck, how it was doing against his fleet with his Cummins and get a real good honest answer that's, about that's, it. That's, I'm really excited about that. I actually want to do the follow up. Uh, we've not talked to him yet, so I'm not gonna say who it was for because he may not want anybody to know he's doing this move. I mean, we're not, not, not that it's a bad thing. It's just one of those things, I don't know. We're, we're gonna not, make a video on it. You yeah. all are gonna know. We're gonna we're gonna get him in the truck. We're gonna do an interview with it. We're gonna talk about it and get his first his first impressions on it. I want to do it. Yeah, I, it's just we've not talked to him about it yet, so we'll just we'll keep it quiet about who it is. But at the end of the day, he is also a businessman, and he's got to be looking at you know what's what's the cost of operation, the initial cost out of the gate, the cost of operation, and what does that do to my bottom line if I own you know a forty plus truck fleet. So. I don't know. It'll be exciting. We get to follow that along and, and you know, give the results you know, literally live as they come to us. So that, yep. that, that'll be fun. And we will be keeping you guys up on that. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Let us know what you think in the comments. Would you consider a Packard MX or are you going to traditionally or go with the traditional path and stick with the Cummins? You know, that's a really hard, that's a hard one. I mean, I've talked to people. Uh, the first time I actually kind of like was interested and I wanted to drive one of these, I talked to a guy out of Bristol who had run a bunch of dump trucks with Cummins in it and then had an MX and said he really liked it. And I was like, really? Just wanted to kind of know about that. And then, you know, after today and driving them around a little bit and stuff, like, I don't hate it. No, no. I mean, it's it's quiet, it's comfortable, it's smooth. And uh, it was like, you know, it was like we both talked about. In the right applications, the engine really does shine. Uh, and actually, that, that actually kind of goes for both of them. Mm -hmm. In the right application, both of them really have their place. Yep, 100%. So uh, that's it. Tell us what you think in the comments. Are we crazy or are we not crazy? Oh, we're crazy for <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, you know what to do. You got to like, subscribe, follow us on Instagram. At Semi Casual Show. And check out our website. We got some really cool swagger going on there. Like Almost shirts, every single day. We got some things. really, really cool shirts coming up soon. So keep checking that out. And outside of that, we'll see you guys next time. Later.